liberate yourself from being a perfectionist. In this episode, I'm going to address how to get a project to near perfection in 90 days. I'm going to share a story with you. Put on your seatbelt, get ready. I want to liberate you. So my name's Doug Andrew and uh, I have been very blessed in my life to be able to write thus far 12 books, all of which have become bestsellers. And I have a confession to make. I used to be a perfectionist, but I got liberated. And if you can relate to me that you don't want to do anything unless all the ducks are lined up in a row, you want everything to be perfect. That's the way I used to be. And I'm so grateful because I got liberated years ago and I've been helping people optimize their financial assets and minimize taxes for years. But also I have a book that I just released. It's called the 10 keys transformation. And in this book, I share in the introduction, how I got liberated from perfectionism. And I actually tell a story of how this helped me go through a major breakthrough. So get ready if this is intriguing you, whether you're a perfectionist or not. I can show you how to get a project completed in 90 days or less to near perfection by doing what I'm going to share. You may be intrigued. Okay, how did I get liberated and who did it? Well, I have a coach, Dan Sullivan. He's coached over 6,000 of the world's top entrepreneurs. And years ago, he taught a concept that uh, oftentimes many people get caught in what he calls the gap, okay? No matter what we do as we go through life and uh, we're trying to be a better business person or a doctor, a dentist, or a chiropractor, a realtor, a CPA, a better father, mother, husband, wife, or whatever. And as we progress, oftentimes we get caught in a gap between where we are now and where we still want to be because we've been taught, oh, come on, we're trying to be perfect. I mean, in the New Testament, Matthew chapter five, verse 48, be therefore perfect. But you know, in Hebrew, it's be therefore becoming. Okay, it's more of a journey, not a destination. And so Dan would teach us, hey, don't get caught in the gap between where you are now and where you still wanna be. Take a moment to celebrate where you used to be. What, what you used to be like or what you were doing or how you spoke or played the piano or whatever it is and look where you are now. Come on, celebrate where you have come from. And then you can look objectively about where you want to go next, okay? So that's called getting out of the gap. But here's what he shared with me because back in 1999, I had been working 10 years on my first book. It was titled Missed Fortune because of the fortunes people miss out on because they simply don't know what they don't know. And I had worked on this book for 10 years. Do you know what I finally did? I uh, forced myself to write for one chapter a page with a myth about money, okay, a common myth and uh, what the reality was and a strategy on how to overcome it. And then I put down some bullet points on if I had somebody's undivided attention for 15 to 20 minutes to dispel this myth, what would I say? In what order would I say it? And then I would walk an 18 hole golf course in the morning and I would simply dictate it. So I got it all dictated when I finally decided to do it that way. It got transcribed, it was 300 pages and it sat on my credenza for three years, waiting for me to have time to perfect it. Oh my heavens, I could kick myself. And here's how Dan liberated me from waiting until it got perfect. Dan Sullivan walked up to a flip chart and he drew a big rectangle and he put a line at about 20% down from the top and he said, Doug, and he put 80% in the biggest part of that square. He said, this is what I've learned because I used to be a perfectionist. Whenever you have any project that is 80% there, record it, print it, say it, send it, release it, do it. 
I almost went into withdrawal. I was shaking. You release it when it's only 80% there? He goes, yeah. People want the information. They don't care if it's perfect. When it's 80% there, release it. He said, you've been working on this book for 10 years. Print it. Oh, okay. And uh, he said, this is what I'm gonna recommend. You print 500 copies, get them out to people, ask for their feedback. You will have 500 editors instead of the 12 at Time Warner who is your publisher. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Well, you ask for their feedback and uh, you'll acknowledge them in the book or you give them a thank you note, you send them a final copy and they will be your editor and they will report back on what's unclear and so forth. And then when you get that feedback, you tweak the last 20% that was not perfect to 80% and you print the second edition and you send that out and you'll get feedback and uh, you will tweak that to 80% and now you'll be 96% there by the second edition. Then you get feedback and you tweak the last 4% to 80% and the third edition will be 99.2% perfect. And by the fourth edition, you'll be near perfect in 90 days. I said, hmm. So I did it. You want to hear the story? Now, before I share this true story, if this is intriguing you, be sure and share, subscribe. I post an in-depth answer to a financial question almost on a daily basis or life-changing concepts like this one. And then stay to the end because I want to gift you a copy of my most recent best-selling book, okay? So what happened is back at the turn of the century, I'd been working on the book and I got it 80% there. And I thought, okay, I had a speaking opportunity at a convention in Nashville, Tennessee. And I decided I am going to take 500 books to that address. Well, we got it 80% there. And I was sitting with my graphic artist and the printer was going to pick it up. They were going to print 500 copies over the weekend and deliver them fully bound on Monday. We're sitting there waiting. They were going to be there by five o'clock. It was 15 to five. And all of a sudden I thought, well, okay, it's only 80% there. And I went, wait a minute, we didn't have a cover. Do you know that Time Warner takes three months to design a cover for a book? We didn't have a cover. Now that's less than 80% there, right? So I said, okay, let me get a photograph and some bullet points with my bio. Why don't you get a picture off the internet of a pot of gold or something? And uh, so she did that. And in less than 15 minutes, we had a cover. Okay. And we released the files and the publisher went out and printed off 500 copies. I went to Nashville, Tennessee. I sold 420 books in one hour after my address. And I said, please give me feedback. Within 30 days, I had feedback from hundreds of readers telling me, golly, this was great. Could you clarify this? Could you give me an example, illustrate this with a story or whatever? I tweaked it. That last 20%, I tweaked to 80%. And the second edition, I printed 2,500 copies, sent them out. I got feedback from those and the third edition that I needed to print 5,000 copies in 60 days, I was able to get feedback and I tweaked it to 99.2%. Now the fourth edition went out right after 90 days. And that's the one that got the attention of Jillian Manis who was my literary agent that introduced me to the number one business book publisher in the world, Time Warner. And they loved the book and commissioned me to write another one. If I had waited around until it was perfect, it would still be sitting on my credenza today, 20 years later. So what's the message? Listen, if my wife, Sherry and I, and uh, we've been married 48 years. If we clear back 48 years ago, decided that uh, we needed to wait until we could afford to have children, we'd still be childless today. We had six children and we always were able to afford them because you just adapt and do that. But if our mindset was, we're gonna wait until we can afford them, ha. Huh. If I called the chief of police, and I said, you know what? I want to go to an NBA game tonight down at the uh, basketball arena, but I don't want to leave my house because I live about 30 minutes away until you tell me all the lights are green. 
he would think I was some kind of a nut. How many times do we do that in life? We wait till all the lights are green, all the ducks are lined up in a row. You know what? If I just get in the car and I start going, even if the first light is red, it turns green, and the next one, the next one, I will get to the ball game on time 99.9% .9 of the time if I just get in motion and start towards my goal or my destination instead of waiting till everything is perfect. So this is for you. I hope that uh, you're beginning to feel a little bit liberated. When you have any project you're working on and it's 80% there, print it, send it, record it, do it, get feedback, tweak the next and release it and you'll be up to 96%. The third try, you'll be up to 99.2 and by the fourth edition, the fourth recording, the fourth time you do it, you will be almost perfect. And why worry about the rest? Because my children revealed to me, Dad, you're not perfect anyway. Oh, I'll never forget the day they revealed that to me. No, we're not perfect. But that's the way that you can overcome perfectionism if that's a roadblock to you achieving anything. So if this is resonating with you, my most recent book that has just been released is called The 10 Keys Transformation. It's a 200 page book. It's in color, it's in digital and also in audio. And this will help you exponentially elevate your career, your profits, your customer engagement in 60 months or less while simplifying your life. And this concept is right at the beginning. And so I would love to gift you a free copy if you go to free 10 keysbook.com and uh, you contribute a nominal amount towards the processing. I want you to be empowered with this book and if you like the audio version, there's an option there also for you to listen and learn. Here's to your brighter future without having to be perfect.